Hey, what's up guys? Today we are going to be taking a look at Brandon Ingram's career high. Rarely is it a good idea to have your coming out party against the defensive player of the year. Two times, that is. Yeah, that is exactly what Brandon Ingram did against Rudy Gobert to set a new career high of 49 points. But rather than looking at his 49 point performance as just like a good stat, let's see how Ingram's play actually won the game for the Pelicans. First, guys, I want to talk about Ingram getting to the line. Regardless of the points that he got from the line, he challenged Gobert repeatedly to put him in foul trouble. So basically what this did is it not only resulted in Rudy Gobert fouling out in overtime, but it also meant that Gobert had to play more timid than he usually would defensively so that he wouldn't foul out in the first place, like earlier in regulation. So once Gobert fouled out, the Pelicans just went on a crazy run to win the game, like with just a minute and a half to work with. Like it wasn't even a contest at that point. Uh, but also the, the points from these free throws don't hurt either. Considering Ingram shot 20 free throws and made 16 of them, that definitely helps. But the essence of Ingram's career night was him relentlessly attacking and putting pressure on the defense. What I thought stood out above most things in this performance was his ability to stay patient throughout a play and make good decisions, you know, based on whether Gobert is, is drawn in by his penetration and that frees up favors or if he has enough room to work with to get a dunk or something. He starts things off by going for a jump shot, but then he realizes that Ingles is contesting him well. So he has the presence of mind to pass the ball to Favors. So he notices that a switch has occurred and so Gobert's on him. So Gobert's not as comfortable defending on the perimeter. So Ingram relocates to the corner and hit the three. Ingram was really effective in transition and here we see him finish the lob. But I thought that his pick and roll play with Derek Favors was what really won them the game. So. Here we see Ingram run a dribble handoff with Favors and notice how the defender goes under the screen. So what Favors is going to do is re-screen him and then Ingram's able to snake dribble into the mid-range jumper here. Great stuff there. And then he continued using those re-screens when his defender went under the screen because basically when you use those re-screens, the defender's momentum is going the wrong way after they go under. So here Royce O'Neal is, you know, having to play behind Ingram because of that. And so Ingram bursts forward before doing a step back that's nearly impossible to defend. But it wasn't just the pick and roll that Ingram was good at. Here he scores on the two-time Defensive Player of the Year in isolation. And then once again, here he is attacking Rudy Gobert by once again snake dribbling the pick and roll. And this time he goes strong to the basket and dunks on him. So, you know, this kid is special, yo. Ingram's versatility is part of what makes him so good, though. On this play, he shows that he can be a successful roll man as he sets a really hard screen on Mitchell and then rolls into an and one. Once again, on two-time Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert. But this is probably one of the more impressive shots of his night. Royce O'Neal gets a piece of the ball on the way up, but Ingram somehow double clutches and still makes the shot. It's just unbelievable. So with the Jazz so keyed in on Ingram now, he was able to set up favors nicely here with the dump off pass as he draws Gobert with his penetration. He made his living in the mid range and he did so effectively. Here he runs another simple pick and roll out of the high post into a pull up mid range jumper. And then he does the exact same thing here. But this is the play that the Jazz just couldn't stop. So the Jazz are trying to send him to his left. So what Favors does is he flips the pick and then in order to get back to his right hand, Ingram snake dribbles once again, 
and he gets to his right side. So he knows that Gobert is either going to commit to contesting his jumper or prevent the pass to Favors. So Ingram makes this split second decision and he shoots a well contested shot for a clutch bucket. And then on this play, the Pelicans perimeter guys simply crisscross, which the Jazz switch, but Royce O'Neal notices the switch just a little too late, and so Ingram's release is so quick that he's able to get off the three. Ingram was unstoppable against Gobert, because whenever Gobert committed too much, Ingram would feed favors for easy buckets. You guys are about to experience some deja vu. So here Ingram comes off the screen and gets the ball going right with Favors rolling to the basket. He's been so on fire all night that Rudy Gobert fouls him on the shot, which is a complete rarity for Gobert. Then here's your deja vu. So once again, we have Ingram going right with O'Neal trailing him and Favors rolling to the rim. So the last time that this happened, Gobert fouled him. Now this time, game over. That's right, the Pelicans definitely won the game right then and there, no overtime tonight. The game definitely did not continue on after a garbage call by the refs on an inbound play with two tenths of a second left. Two tenths! It was just over after this game winner by Ingram.